Is it on? Yep. Okay, now it's on. Okay. Okay, good morning, everyone. I am going to talk about an EEG experiment with Bill Bankston, and uh, I'm going to jump right into the data. There's a lot to say. Um, I'm going to skip right through here. Here's the basic design of the experiment. Uh, early on, I took a look at the data, and I started taking interest in this one right here. Uh, I started digging into it, and even though there are a lot of different interesting aspects of the data, I took a look at one aspect. And so that's what we're going to be looking at today. That's, that's what's been done so far, and if that seems a little incomplete to you, that's because it is. Um, uh, but, that's, but that's what we have so far, and uh, so I'm going to tell you what's been done, how it's been done, and some of the curious data that's resulted from it. Uh, here is the montage for those who know and care about such things. Uh, for the rest of you, just take a look at the placement of those electrodes are going to be the same placements as when we looked at a spectral display. And here is uh, Bill's baseline of his eyes open right before he's doing the healing sessions. And just, just, uh, just glance at it. We're going to be looking at the back of the head primarily, and we're going to be looking around 8 hertz, and that would be right here. If there's only one spectral display or only one box showing, it's going to be this PZ location in the back of the head in the center. Uh, so that's eyes open, and that's relevant because he did his healings with his eyes open. And yet it looks a lot more like eyes closed. And here are, here's the session that we're going to be focusing on. And that's a lot more like eyes closed, and that has very big waves in the back of his head. Uh, the difference being that the frequency is lower and the amplitude is higher. Uh, another thing that's interesting to note is that this peak right here is the same and it's reflected on the right back side of the head, whereas the other peak is more reflected on the left. And this is a little deceptive here, uh, this, this twin peaks, because in most of the time, uh, uh, the left is dominating on the higher frequency, and it's just the occasional bursts that bring up that second lower peak. Okay, here's the data set itself. Um, this blue right here indicates that we're going we're to uh, uh, erase this section of data from a spectral analysis if we were going to analyze this whole, this whole set here. And these waves right here correspond to those big spikes we were looking at earlier. So these are these big waves in the back of the head. So here would be a selection of data, and this is how I started looking at it. I just started looking at uh, snapshots like this. Here's a second and a half of data, and then when I bring up a spectral analysis, I'll see a peak like this. And I did this many times, just, just looking around. And when I, when I put my mouse over the top of that peak, the software will tell me uh, what frequency it is. And here it comes up 7.81. And I did this many times. I would see, I would see little uh, uh, one second bursts of these, or even half second bursts of these, and then I would surround it, and uh, it would keep coming up 7.81. And that number, uh, seemed familiar to me, and I was like, what, what is going on with that number? And then, and then I stopped looking at the power spectra, which, uh, which squares all the amplitudes, and I just started looking at straight amplitude, and then I started seeing secondary peaks, and I started measuring uh, what those were. And so then a pattern emerged that it would be 7.81 and 15.62. And uh, it didn't take me long to realize that was an exact double. And so, <laughs> yeah, thanks, my math, fantastic. <laughs> So, so I kept seeing that pattern, and, and I, I couldn't remember from uh, years ago when I worked at a biofeedback clinic, I couldn't remember anything about uh, EEG harmonics. I couldn't remember anything about alpha harmonics. I, I Googled it, I looked in books, I, op I picked up the phone, I, I didn't see anything. But I just thought, I took a note of it and I kept looking for it until I saw this one. And there's one, double, triple. I thought, okay, I, I think there's something here. Uh, so I looked at this and, and uh, I, I got a little bit excited and then I said, you know what, I, I think I know what 7.81 reminds me of. It, it's a Schumann frequency. It's the, it's the frequency of the Earth. So here it looks like Bill is doing harmonics on the frequency of Earth. That, that might be important. So, uh, so ever since that day, there's, it's almost as if there's this guy named Schumann that's kind of hanging over my shoulder watching me work and saying, is, is this about me? <laughs> so, 
So I knew I needed more data. Uh, oh, and, and I didn't really get that excited until I looked at the bispectra, because that's, that's the tool Jay said, well, we, you're going to want to look at the bispectra. And I didn't know what he had in mind, but this is what he had in mind. And so I wanted to know if those frequencies were really happening at the same time. Is it really like a bell? And, uh, and, and here it is. You can see 7.81, 15.63, I think it's 23.44. You can see one, two, three lines there. And then I think, then I started to wonder, well, are they really happening in the same place or is this being reflected from somewhere else? So I mapped that out. And then they are right on top of each other. And the highest amplitude in the same place. So then I'm really wanting to get back to the data and I'm going to want to isolate all those little bits and, uh, and get at that. And the software doesn't really allow me to do that in any um, sensible way. And I, and I keep banging at it and having all kinds of bad ideas. And then I start um, staring into space on this question. And uh, two days later, I come up with an answer. And I realize there's an export button. I can uh, put it into Excel. And, uh, you know, so what if it's a half a million rows? I've got a newish computer. <laughs> and I can uh, put my funny little formulas here and ask uh, PZ what kind of, uh, uh, how big these waves are, and then assign values in these columns, and then pour that data back into my EEG software and tell the EEG software that these are a couple anonymous electrodes. And then on that basis, I can select the data that I want to see. Here, the big waves are uh, passing through. And I can also do the inverse and uh, see the contrast. And I was pretty excited about myself at that point. <laughs> and uh, then I look at the data, and sure enough, it looks really good, really nice contrast. Re everything's great until I realize that it's only analyzing the really big chunks of data. And it's really skipping over most of, most of the sample, most of the things that I want to see. So at that point, I stare into space and ask myself a brand new question. <laughs> and I come up with an answer that I was basically almost there. I just needed to do a little bit more work in Excel and select uh, just, the, just the data that I wanted to see or pass in a zero. And from that point, I could uh, create, uh, create a file for the EEG that I could uh, analyze each of these bursts that come through individually and collectively. So here I've got 15 of the most uh, the, the longest lasting burst, let's say. Each quarter second was greater than 20 microvolts or something. And, and uh, so these 15 I took a look at individually, and here we're going to have three views of all of them. Uh, so, and, and here, here's a trade-off. The, the, the spectral analysis will allow you to look at one second of data, but it will give you very poor resolution. So I wanted to know, because I've got this Schumann guy looking over my shoulder, I want to know what that frequency really is. So my trade-off is I'm going to have three seconds of zeros in here to get a four-second analysis to get quarter-second resolution. And with that trade-off is some error. So I'm going to expect some error. But I do that knowing that I've got 15 samples. And out of those, at the end, I'm going to tally them up, and maybe I'll learn something about what this frequency is. Again, the alternative is just always, again, uh, 7.81, 15.63. So here's one, and it comes up 8.06, a little higher. And this one has a rounded harmonic, and that's one uh, quarter step, quarter hertz away from a double. And given the expected error, I think that is a double. And when you look at the bispectra, you can see two nice lines coming up. And that's the first one. Second one's a little bit longer. And again, 8.06. And again, an, uh, nearly on the double. And a nice second line. Third one is a 7.81. And a nice second line. Fourth one surprised me because there's one thing I didn't tell you about this sample. I tried to filter out anything above 8.3 hertz because, again, I had Schumann on my mind. Uh, but but I, I tried to filter him out, but he was so strong he came through anyway. Uh. And uh, he did have a, he, he does have a little bit of a second line there. This one can't quite make up his mind on the peak, but on the double, it splits the difference. 
And the sixth one is by far the longest continuous burst. And it's very specific. 